Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, and I decided to add a raven and another little pumpkin to it. Right. <laughs> Last minute change. So we're going to spice it up a little bit and add a little bit more Halloween flair to this one. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man chat tonight. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those, and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so um, you can obviously tell by the intro that uh, Photoshop is not my strong point. <laughs> it's just very, very roughly photoshopped. Um, yeah, so don't, no judging. I'm going to be using a 12 by 12 inch canvas today. This is the Fredericks Mixed Media. Actually, no, this is the archival canvas board, the watercolor one. Um, but I've painted it with carbon black. Any black will do. Um, and... And then I sketched out my design with some chalk here beforehand just to kind of try to play with the arrangement a little bit. I changed it a little bit for my Photoshop to have his tail included and turned him kind of to the side a little bit, this raven guy here. But I think it'll be make a, make a little bit more fun um, composition for us. Um, I grabbed my uh, Princeton brushes. We're going to mostly dry brush tonight. It's going to be very kind of subtle um, and pretty easy, I think, hopefully. Um, if you wanted to simplify it, you could obviously take out this whole section and just do the pumpkin. I'll show you how, um, but I decided to kind of add a little bit more detail. So my brushes are the Princeton Aspen, Princeton Aspen, and I got a variety of like liners and a couple of flat brights and a couple of filberts for um, some of the feathers and other details. And I also grabbed my blenders with the quarter inch and three eighths inch in the velvet touch line from Princeton. So. Thank you to Princeton and Fredericks for providing our Stuff. canvas and brushes tonight. Let's go over the colors. Here we go. Another shot of my yeah. <laughs> really badly. I'm not sure if I'm going to add no, the berries like or that. not, but like <laughs> we'll see. Um, carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, in cadmium yellow light, Indian yellow hue, cadmium orange, cadmium red light. Uh, quinacridone magenta and then I added the thalo blue green shade uh, just so we can mix up a little bit of green if we want to and then um, unbleached titanium and titanium white and actually probably going to put out a little bit of glazing medium why not let's do it let's get just wild. in case <clears throat> spray these with some water and we're just going to jump on in here um, basically if you're going to um, draw your pumpkins out. You're just wanting to do um, one big circle, <laughs> you know, basically uh, with kind of a flattened top. And um, I just did a, a couple of pumpkins um, earlier, a white pumpkin earlier. So if you want to see how to draw in that one, I kind of showed a little bit of how to draw it. And this one's very similar to it. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump on in here, I guess. And first thing I want to do is just cover my pumpkin. I'm going to go ahead and cover up his face and just do the whole thing um, with the get a wet paper towel here. And the nice thing about working with chalk is that if you want to erase something, you can just use a damp cloth and just don't rub very hard, but it'll come right off. So I'm just going to take that face off of there. We'll draw it in later. What? And I'm going to go ahead and grab the four short filbert. We'll see. I might need a bigger one. But yeah, actually, I think I do want a bigger one. I'm going to grab the eight bright. A little bit bigger. Just cover more area. And I'm going to start with the cadmium red um, light. And this will be kind of our base color for a pumpkin. So just a little bit of water. And I got a little bit of water on my brush before I started, but it's um, when you're dry brushing, you want to use kind of minimal water, minimal water on your brush and minimal water on your in your paints. And the thicker paints work a little bit better for dry brushing. So I'm just going to start at the top here and just kind of drag it down. And here at first, I kind of do want at least the edges here to be fairly clean. So I'm going to use my thicker paint right there and really kind of press down. But in some of these areas where I want a little bit of that black to show through, I'll press a little bit lighter. OK, 
Okay. And this pumpkin doesn't have a lot of heavy lobes. You know, some pumpkins have this really rounded bodies and really obvious lobes with a lot of shadow in between. But this one's pretty flat, so that actually will make it a little bit easier for us as we're painting this. Right, yeah, yeah, the white pumpkin's got more lobes on it. It's got the little shadowy areas. And I made my pumpkin a little bit taller than is in the photograph just to fill up some of this empty space up here in the corner. So I made him a little longer. Okay, and then here at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some burnt sienna, mix that in just so that I have a little bit of darker color. Kind of at the bottom of my pumpkin there. Let's go ahead and grab some more burnt umber, or burnt, I'm sorry, burnt sienna. More burnt sienna and some of the quinacridone magenta now. And here at the bottom, I'm gonna make the pumpkin more red. And I have him a little bit farther back just so that it'll look like it's a little bit farther away and then this one's down lower so that it looks like it's closer to us. Just a little way to illusion the a little bit of depth here in our pumpkin and pumpkins plural. Oh, there we go. And you can see here where I'm like showing some of those dark things there, dark, dark spots. So I want to just kind of very lightly go from the bottom up to kind of get rid of any of those and just try to make sure that I have all of those obvious brush strokes kind of blended out a little bit or at least going in the direction that we want them to go which would be you know up um, this way and not kind of just broken off in in a weird way there <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> I a tickle in my throat all day Getting a little bit of the cadmium orange, just lightly going over. I need to leave this um, to dry. I think it's not wanting to pick up the paint. It's kind of sticking. You can see how it like was sort of sticking and grabbing um, the paint, but not like going on smoothly. So it just means that that's already starting to dry enough that I need to just leave it alone and come over here. And this is gonna be my darker side. And so I'm gonna get it even more magenta. A little bit of burnt umber, maybe even a tiny bit of black. Don't need a lot of the black, it goes a long way. So I've got the, all these three colors here, plus a little bit of the browns and some black, just to make it a little bit darker on this side. Light's coming from this way. And I am gonna go around my white pumpkin though, because I don't wanna have to try to cover this white pumpkin with, if I get the orange on it. So I'll kinda go around it, but then I wanna make sure that I blend out that line so that it doesn't show an obvious line or halo around the outline around the, that pumpkin. So there we go. And then it's just a matter of filling in this middle part with some of the kind of middle tone. So I'm gonna get a little bit of just that Cadmium red light, a little bit more water to make it go on a little bit smoother. And just brush it down here. I am covering most of the black up with this. And there's a little bit of a dip in our photograph right here, so you can do that at the top. But the bottom's pretty straight, it's slightly rounded. Okay, now when you're doing this, once you do this part, you're probably going to be like me where you can still see some streaks and things. So we're just going to let that dry really well and then we can put more layers on, but we've got to let it dry first or we just, we can't continue to add layers upon layers with acrylics. You can add layers pretty quickly, but you have to let them dry in between. Otherwise you'll cause a gummy mess and it won't work. You can use a hairdryer at this point if you wanted to, to 
blow dry it and get it dry faster, but I'm just going to work on a different area and then come back to it. So I'm going to grab a little bit of both my browns here, and we're just going to start on our stem. And this I am wanting to be a little bit more messy with it. Get a little bit of the unbleached titanium and just run it through. And then I'm just going to go along this edge with it and kind of create a little highlight there. And then maybe move to the middle and going to do another little one. Just, you know, how those pumpkins have those little kind of lines in the trunks. And then I'm going to break off the end here and just make it kind of fuzzy. And then if you want to, you can even, well, I think we're going to do some vines and things off of it, but I'm just going to kind of dab the end a little bit to create sort of a fuzzy broken line there and just leave that. It's, I don't, I haven't covered over my chalk lines, but that's okay. And while I've got this, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do my stem on this one too. Why not? Okay, so uh, for those out there who uh, don't know, our show starts when the big hand's on the 12 and the little hand is on the 6. Uh -huh. uh, what did you prep your canvas with? Carbon black. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> we start on time. That is one Ish. thing. Mostly, yep. Yeah. Most, I mean, within no. a minute or two, yeah. but we don't, like, you know, we're... Yeah. We try to be consistent. We try to be consistent. I'm, I'm just pretty. giving our patrons a hard time because a week or two ago, several of our unusual suspects were coming in late. Uh -huh. and I was like, okay, let's go over this one more time. <laughs> Big hands on the, on the 12, little hands on the 6. <laughs> and they're like, well, that's where you live. But uh. I'm like, okay, you got me. <laughs> yeah. I am just using water here to clean up this edge. While I'm thinking about it, cut this brush here. There we go. <coughs> I am sorry. I. Am. It is fall allergy season. Oh it's, my gosh! It's yes. very high. As I was taking a walk yesterday, and, and the golden rod was very plentiful everywhere. Yes, so. I am wheezy, wheezy, wheezy. Like, like the wrapper? <laughs> no. Not like okay. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab the Willis blender, the, or the blender it's called, and get some of my, both of my whites. I don't want to use just straight white. And I'm going to do a little bit back here. Ooh, that's, I've got a lot of my brush here. A little bit back there. And then a little bit coming in front there. And then just kind of figure out where you want to put your lobes. So where you want them. I'll do one here. Leave a little space here. This will be kind of one that's back here. And let's go ahead and get a little bit of blue and a little bit of burnt umber and make a gray. It'll be kind of a blue-gray color. And we'll use that in our in our shadows. So I'm just gonna use it down here and pull up through that wet paint while it's wet. And just like this one, kind of do the darker color on this side here and the bottom edge. You could use any color you wanted. You could just use black and white if you wanted. You didn't have to use this kind of gray blue. I had a bunch of people commenting on my protea flowers and I actually left a pretty long conversation because it, it kind of irritated me because they were like, I'm 
must be color or, or something like I I never see the colors that you see, and uh, one of us must be colorblind and it isn't me. And I'm like, <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Well, um, no. So what I like to do is play with my colors, make them more interesting. So is my pumpkin blue? Probably not. But using, yeah, that's, them's fighting words right there. Um, don't mess. But I, I'm really, I'm really, um, in all seriousness, I'm very um, um, aware, you know, that there's different ways of approaching painting. So if you want to do yours in a different way, by all means, I'm not trying to teach you guys the only way to paint something. I'm just trying to show you what I, how I do it and how I, you know, approach things is kind of to play with the colors a little bit. And I've trained myself over 30 something years of painting to kind of look beyond the obvious colors and see the colors that are maybe a little bit more subtle, but are there and bring those out a little bit. And so I play with that when in my paintings and I make choices like you know starting out the pink flower with purple because they're you know there are undertones of purple in the in the flower and so I make it more obvious just so that it's a little, a little bit more interesting so that's what I'm doing here with this white pumpkin making it a little bit more interesting by pulling out some grays and blues in the white areas and then your whites are going to be, or your other colors are going to be much more interesting. And I don't know. That's just my... Well, more importantly, did you process the refund for them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because they paid so much for... Well, it is, it's, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's always interesting <laughs> when people complain about so free they, videos. You're like, really? Did okay. they show you their art? Because I was holding, yeah, exactly. I was holding them to watching me. I Citizens was like, rest. you better, you better watch this. And I'm the only one that knows how to do this right. And right after that, they were doing finger guns at themselves in the mirror. Yes. I honestly don't think the person was trying to be mean. It was, it was because they were kind of like, LOL, but it, it kind of struck me funny because... There's people that, well, I mean, I, I get it, though. I, and that's why I replied and didn't just delete it, because I, I usually just delete ones that I think are trying to be malicious. But um, but it is something that you have to train yourself to do as an artist. You kind of train yourself to look for things that um, the undertones of other colors and things. Like, so on this, we've added this pumpkin in its original form. I pulled it from... A photo where it wasn't it didn't have this glowing pumpkin next to it so I know that this glow in this pumpkin this yellow light that's coming out of it is going to affect this white pumpkin white always reflects um, anything that's around it so I'm going to also add this orange and and yellow to this pumpkin too but this is our first coat I've got to let it dry really good and then we'll add more to it later so off my soapbox thanks um, just, mm -hmm. it just cracks me up. But I mean, it, it, like again, it's just something that you you the more that, and I've had people say this, you know, that that have taken classes from me um, over the years. They start to see the colors that they were missing before, and well, so it's just a way to. You just have to learn. It's a learned skill to, yeah. you know, look at an image and find the colors that are not obvious because your eye is drawn to the obvious colors first and. And it'll ignore the other colors if you don't force yourself to look at, them, you know, to really delve and look at it. So, all right. I, I don't even paint, and you've caused me to do that, too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, making a little bit of green here using my blue and a little bit of the Indian yellow hue, which makes the, uh, the green a little bit more of a neutral green and not a super bright green. If I used the brighter orange or yellow, it would have used made a super bright green. I'm just going to use it a little bit on that stem there, and I'm going to go ahead and use it up here, too. Why not? All right. 
There we go. This is still drying, so it's put the paint on fairly thick, so it's going to take it a minute to dry. So with our Raven, we're not actually going to really paint him in. He's already black, and so all we're going to do is add a little bit of a tiny bit of a like a shadow highlight highlights on him. So I'm going to get the blue and my black. Mostly black, or kind of 50-50. And then I'm going to add just a tiny bit of white to it. I might add a little bit of the magenta. I feel like it's kind of slightly purple. Okay, so, and this is another thing that you can do is, you see my color palette here. I'm going to mix all my colors um, for my shadows and my highlights and everything out of these colors and so I know that they're all going to go together even if I don't use this blue anywhere else in the painting it's still using the same colors that I'm using the magenta from here and the blue from down here and the black obviously so we know it's going to work and I want this color to be almost black so mix it with just a tiny bit of white and we want to start out with almost black and I'm just gonna go around the outside of my bird wing here. A little bit on his body. And add just a little bit of highlight. And I'm gonna go up here and there's gonna be a little bit of highlight up here on the face. I'm gonna get a smaller br brush for the, for the, um, the beak and then this wing has got a highlight on it coming off and a little bit on the neck and the breast and that's about all I'm gonna do I'm I might do a little bit um, like coming down tail feathers or something here but it's about all I'm gonna do there And then let's get the smaller brush. I'm going to go ahead and get this little bitty one here. This is the two aught round. Get some white. My black. A little bit of this blue. I wanted a little bit more of a gray. Just a slightly different tone. And the beak's fairly highlighted on him. So I'm going to get... here and do that and then I'm going to bring this black in on the beak but I'm going to for now I'm going to bring it there we go and then there's like this little triangle shape right here that happens at the bottom of the beak I'm going to get the black there and just do my line through I'm at the bottom and then bring this color from the top down over it a little bit right there and then the eye is set just kind of above the split right here of the beak. So just slightly above right here. I kind of put it low on my sketch. So right in here, get my black. Make sure I've got a nice dark eye. Let me, let me go ahead and get my chalk marks off of here because it's kind of affecting what it looks like right now. Yeah, we'll see what we're doing better. There we go. And this is dry now, so I can rub that off. And I probably will need to 
uh, touch up my black back here a little bit. But see how um, dark that that is? And I'm going to add a little bit more highlight to it, but not much. It doesn't need much. Okay, so getting a little bit of white here. And I'm just going to kind of go along the top of the beak with a little bit of white highlight. Like that. A little bit in the eye. And actually, yeah, that'll work. And let's go ahead and use a little bit of this white with some of our gray. And I'm just going to put a little bit more light, like right at the top where the light's going to be coming from here or here, you know. So I want a little bit more light like at the top of his head coming over and I'm just going to do little feathers there. Maybe a little bit of color right there. They've got that like rough that comes down so give it a little, give them a little rough. This comes under here. I'm going to get the darker. Ooh, I don't have any left. There we go. <clears throat> so I watched a video from our good friend, Chef John. Uh -huh. I don't think he knows we're friends, but we are. <laughs> Anyways, he was doing a... Uh, the stuffed pepper Ooh. and he was using orange bell peppers and he cut a little face out of it for jack-o'-lanterns cute <clears throat> and he said in his research for the show he looked up what is the folklore behind the jack-o'-lantern uh -huh. and he didn't really give it away but apparently it has its roots and this is from chef john from the internet so take that for what it's worth is uh from from ireland uh -huh. and uh somebody who didn't pay for his drinks or had somebody offer to pay for their drinks and apparently now they got to go through life carrying a pumpkin or a jack-o'-lantern or headless or something like that so okay it's that was weird. a really bad story i didn't follow that at all well would you expect anything more out of me i'm just i'm really sure what it was pretty exciting up until i just flubbed it huh <laughs> i was ready for the yeah, okay. <laughs> Never mind. I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> so the legs coming come out at an angle from the bottom here and that's that's about it. All right. Yeah, um I'd like to know more about that. An Irish <coughs> myth about um What? An Irish myth. Okay, I'll, I'll read it and I'll come back that's to you. That's okay. Stingy yeah. Jack was the guy's name. Okay. Oh, so that's why it's called Jack oh, Lantern. He, he invited the devil to have a drink with him. Okay, well, it's obviously true then. Yep. And he so didn't want to pay for story. his drinks. Okay. So. And so that's where the story, the Jack o' Lantern and comes from. And then, yeah, he tricked him into giving him coins. He didn't pay off the bill. And, yeah, so. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just erase all of this. We'll cut this part out of the video. Don't worry. <laughs> Terrible storytelling. <coughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> don't come to our channel for facts. It's, it's pretty much if if we've taught people anything over the years, that's... <laughs> Outside of painting, don't really listen to us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not so true facts with okay, Mark and so, Angela. So you know me, and, and the story is more than like a paragraph long, so I've lost interest in reading. Right. It, that's it's kind just, of how I figured. It sounded like that's what happened with your story. You kind of were like, and his name was Jack, and then something yeah, happened. He had to put yeah, a thing on his head, and that was, was it. That's about involved. all I know. <laughs> dumb words <laughs> and then words <laughs> and then there were more words and I just didn't bother to read them but <laughs> no pictures I'll, I'll wait for the movie <laughs> I love it <laughs> 
trust me, I'm not being mean to him. <laughs> Don't leave me mean comments. <laughs> You've got a fan group that yeah, they're doesn't my, like it when they're my homies. They when I come tease you, <laughs> <laughs> they got your back. Oh no, I deserve it. Trust me, <laughs> <laughs> I well deserve it. I'm getting unbleached titanium and a little bit of both of my browns here. And I'm just going to go back in and highlight this even more. Just really give it a good. And I've switched to my four filbert here, so it is going to create nice rough edges for me. There we go. And I kind of did the bird feet there too, just a little bit. Let's get a little bit of burnt umber here. I think these are there we go. I'm gonna get use the burnt umber to kind of tone that down just a little bit. big pumpkin okay that's good and I need to go back in and darken that up again I kind of covered up all my light areas but I'm going to go ahead and use let's go ahead and go back to the larger brush here and this is dry enough we'll give it a second coat now so this time I'm going to get my orange and a little bit of cadmium or uh, Indian yellow hue because so I want this side of the pumpkin to be a little bit brighter And you could leave the jack-o'-lantern part out if you just wanted this to be kind of a fall pumpkin instead of the Halloween one. So, although with the raven, it kind of pulls it towards the Halloween more. And again, just doing long brush strokes in the direction that that pumpkin growth is happening. So that's what will give you these nice streaks for your pumpkin. There you go. And then getting the darker color. And I haven't cleaned out my brush, so I still got a little bit of that brighter color in there. in the cadmium red light coupling up with my dark over my equal light area it'll blend with it and I'm just kind of flicking it so that it creates a broken edge if you flick it instead of pull and lift it creates that I'll show you on paper it's easier to explain it on paper but If I'm creating my lines and I'm and I'm pulling and lifting like this, I'm going to get a hard line there. But if I instead start here where I want my color the darkest and lift and flick, I'm going to get a nice broken edge there, and it'll be more obvious the you know the more I f I flick, and then I can get my light color from the opposite direction and flick this way and where the two meet are it's this broken line instead of this straight edge right there and so you get a natural blending without having to actually blend it and see you can still see that dark through here that line through it and whereas here you really can't tell where one starts and the other one ends and of course I would do it more often to get a better blend but that's what I'm doing so when you're dry brushing like this, it's really helpful to to do it that way. 
and get a little bit of the lighter highlight color at the top there. Okay. Get some of that darker color and pull up. The darker had a little bit of the black on the magenta and cadmium red. Cadmium red light. So I'll give everything a good second coat. this kind of odd dark area in the middle here so I'm just going to kind of get a little bit of that middle tone and try to okay there we go if you look at her photograph of pumpkins it's got these long streaks in it so even in my dark areas I want a little bit of the lighter color and in my light areas I want a little bit of the darker color and just kind of create that natural streaking that you see and then we'll let that dry really good we'll add our add our darker colors getting that burnt umber here and it too my stem there. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on this pumpkin here. So we can get my white. I'm going to add just a little bit of that orange color to it. Maybe a little bit of the Indian yellow hue. So it's got like that golden light. Use a little bit of it right here where it's going to be facing this pumpkin. This pumpkin's all lit up, so it's going to cast a golden glow on this pumpkin over here. I'm going to even give some of that yellow, more yellow light. And I don't want it to turn my pumpkin yellow, so I have to use this really sparingly, just in like a few little places. Like just right there, a little bit. And the rest of it I want... Bleach titanium and come up here. Okay, so I have a summary of the story, real quick. <laughs> So he tricked the devil twice. Devil was upset. Uh -huh. When he died, God wouldn't let him into heaven because he was an unsavory fellow because of what he did. Okay. And the devil wouldn't let him go to the other place because he tricked him twice. Okay. So he gave him a burning coal <clears throat> to light his path walking through the darkness forever. And so he put it into a carved turnip. Ah. And he's walking the earth with a carved turnip with a burning coal to light his way. Got it. So that's the history that's of the, pumpkin. the Jack O'Lantern. Interesting. I would have thought that Heaven would have been glad he tricked the devil. But maybe he had bad. They didn't like that he was hanging out with him in the first place. I don't know. The rules may be different in other, in other parts of the world. I don't know. <laughs> this was the Bible Belt. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Sorry. I think these things in my head are. This is what I thought when you were saying it. I was like, why would that? 
that would be a good thing, but okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just adding my second coat. Basically same colors-ish um, that are gray here. It's kind of trying to... And it's not going to be as dark as in my photograph because the light's coming from this direction, so I keep thinking I need to maybe make this side a little bit brighter than it is in my photograph. Darken this side up over here. And just going back and forth, just like I showed you with that thing, you know, making sure that when I'm blending, I'm pulling my pulling up and just flicking it so that I've got these broken edges that I can blend into when I put my next color down. So getting a little bit of that brighter white -ish color and just pulling down over my highlight area there. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to get a little bit of bright, bright white here. And just hit it just a couple of places. And maybe a tiny, tiny bit of yellow with it. That bright white. Because it's going to be glowing from our pumpkin. We'll let that dry and see what it looks like when it's dry. We may need to blend this out a little bit more, but I think for now it looks all right. I might get a little bit, I feel like I want a little bit more of that orangey color, because I think it will have a little bit of orange also. So I'm gonna put a little bit of orange, like bounced light right there, where it's picking up a little bit of the orange down in the more shadowy areas of the pumpkin that's facing just this these couple that are facing the orange pumpkin and this part's not going to catch that bounce light off the orange of the pumpkin but like I said white is reflective so whatever's near it it's going to reflect that color or you know I'm well, it's not reflective, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's it's more, it's going to... Show the other colors. Yeah, it picks up the colors, almost like a mirror. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. And I don't think I'm going to do much more with my crow. I'm pretty happy with him. He looks yeah. pretty good. My, not crow, raven. I, I learned the difference. Okay, so raven, it, it has to do with their their voices partly so we can't really tell from his vo his voice because we obviously we're not hearing him talk but um and ravens do talk like a parrot even they they're real smart but um ravens have this rough right here and they also have a, a pointed tail so crows have a rounded tail and ravens have a v-shaped tail so correct go on i'm fact checking you as we go along oh, here okay that was all that's all i know so the the raven does more of a croaking sound right and the crow does more of a caw sound right well that, that's why i said okay. i did that they but i can't tell yeah. from this image right, right. what and the, the ravens do barrel rolls ah, while yes. flying. That's interesting. Okay, so back to my story. Really, I mean, <laughs> what, what, so wouldn't, a, your story. What, wouldn't a turnip rot? <laughs> I mean, how can you go through eternity with a turnip? <laughs> I'm sorry. 
So okay, back to I was that. over your story before you started it. So. <laughs> no more. <laughs> no, it is interesting. It is interesting. But I wonder how you go from that story to what we do with pumpkins now. <laughs> That's a real big leap. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use this while I've got it out. And I think I just got painted myself. Um, I'm scratching my arm, holding um, this. <laughs> I'm going to get some blue brown ish and a little bit of the white, the burnt umber, a little bit of black, just whatever, you know, just this color up here. So we're actually growing pumpkins this year. And what happens is the the stem has this the stem goes this way and then these pumpkins kind of come off it. So you've got a main stem here, and so when you, where you break it off, you've got sometimes you've got these long stringy um, things, and they, and there's these little little curly cue things that come off. So I'm just gonna do kind of some curly cue things coming off of here, and. It doesn't have to, I'm just doing it real subtle right now because I'm not sure if I want this or not. So, but I think that, I think it just kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. And that's about all I'm going to do, I think, there. And I can make it a little bit, I can add green or whatever, but I'm going to leave that for now and see. I'm, I'm I, obviously playing with this because I... I was like, if we do just the jack lantern, I'm going to be done in like 20 minutes. <laughs> it was pretty simple. Mark's like, and? <laughs> and that's a problem. Why? <laughs> uh, well, remember, you're in training. That's true. That's so, true. Well, we're only 47 minutes in, so I'm I know doing you're, good. You're rocking it, babe. I'm doing good. You always do good. Thanks. Plenty of time for me to tell my stories. <laughs> <laughs> I have another story with no point. So, do you know the story of And no ending. <laughs> I know half of it. And I'm going to start it and then get about halfway through and realize I don't know the end. Yeah. The yeah, end. It's not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be really careful with this because this is super wet. <laughs> Um, <laughs> going to bring my smiley up here and I'm doing it a little bit off center like it is in my photograph so a little bit more kind of facing him slightly so doing the opening first and then cutting out some teethies just got one here one here here, I like happy pumpkins. I'm not into the scary Halloween. That's why I don't do a lot of scary stuff at Halloween. I just don't, I never really might. Well, partly my mom never let me. So maybe it's because of that. I just, we weren't able, we weren't allowed to dress up like witches or anything or ghosts or anything scary. So I still kind of. I know I'm an adult and I can do what I want now, but still kind of <laughs> still do that. So, so where do zombies fall in all this? Because I've never been a zombie. Well, I know you've never been one, but <laughs> there's been some shows watched. Is all I'm saying. Oh right. Well, I can watch them. I just can't dress up like them. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right, okay. There, at least there's a line that, that we don't cross. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> sorry, this is my Christian upbringing coming I'm out. I'm sorry here. to all the zombies out there. <laughs> we don't mean to offend. Right, starting with my light here, and I'm going to leave some of this undercoat. This is why I did it this way because a lot of this is is um, blended out right here. So I'm just going to kind of do my yellow right in the upper parts and then like right here I want to get my orange and Indian yellow hue and kind of blend out that edge while it's wet 
just kind of push it around a little bit. I'm gonna have to do this a couple of times, so it's okay if you don't get it right on the first try. And then get some of my cadmium yellow or cadmium red light with some cadmium orange. I'm gonna do this light orangey color. So it should be just slightly lighter than the outer area. So it looks like it's cut out of our pumpkin. Check a lantern. This brush is kind of... But there we go. So like I said, I probably have to do it a couple of times to get it just right, but that's kind of kind of what we're going for, sort of. This one, you've got the triangle inside because it's facing us, so we're seeing a little bit on both sides. So instead of just on this side, we're seeing we're seeing it in the middle right here. And we've got the inside of the pumpkin showing here and here and so again the inside we're going to get just the next color scheme over just a little bit more of the orangey yellow the indian yellow hue or whatever you've got just add some yellow to your orange or, or some orange to your yellow i mean either or and then my cadmium red light and my orange and hopefully we did our pumpkin dark enough in this middle area so that this stands out if it doesn't I can always go back in and kind of darken up or just make the inside lighter either one there we go so I'm gonna get some more of my bright yellow and a little bit of white Just where they meet, kind of. And you can see it's not blending because this is starting to dry. So I need to leave it alone. It's tempting to keep on messing with it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't want to be messed with right now. We gotta leave it alone and come back to it. Give it a second coat later. I'm gonna. I can do my yellow because I can tell it's kind of pretty much dry. And then this one is almost all just yellow. Adding that little bit of white to it helps it more be a more opaque and cover up these darker colors better. So that's why we're adding the yellow. Or adding the white to the yellow, I mean. And I'm using heavy body acrylics and I'm still needing to do two coats. So if you're using a different, like a craft acrylic or something, what you may want to do is paint around your these areas or paint them white and then paint over them this way. Like so paint the paint the background, you know, and then paint this area just white. And it'll give you kind of a neutral base to start from and then you can um, add the colors on top. Getting the red light right there there's just a little bit of a glow right there and I'm just gonna tap put it where I want it darkest wipe my brush off and then just tap and pull that paint down we'll do it a little bit okay. I think I'm gonna put I think a little bit of this orange yellow might might show up on my raven just a little bit <clears throat> just put a little bit on his belly I'm gonna whisper mm -hmm. when I do it so it looks like he's glowing a little bit see these are kind of the art oh. techniques that you don't learn just anywhere <laughs> certain parts of the painting you have to whisper during <laughs> There we go. 
too. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then let's go ahead and add a little bit on my oh. thing there, too. Let's pick well, it up. see what you did there. And I definitely need more glow on here. So just dry brushing a little bit of glow. go ahead and switch to a little bit bigger brush here so I can cover this smile it has got a bigger area to work with Let's get a bigger brush just helps me be able to lay the paint down faster so that I it doesn't dry before I'm wanting it to if I need to blend so I'll always use the biggest brush that you can fit into the area when you're working with acrylics and that helps because they do dry so fast you you want to give yourself every advantage. Using the edge there to really carve that out. And then I'm going down almost to the edge, but leaving just about a quarter inch or so for the cutout part, the inside of the pumpkin that's showing. Same thing there. Smoothing this out as I go as well. Don't want any lumps. So while you're focused on that, I'll just remind everybody about patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. And that's over there. You can get traceables and bonus content and all kinds of good fun things. So check it out. I've, I've been making a list of all your videos mm -hmm. and I'm back to like November of 2019. Wow. And there's just from today back there's like 200 and some on 220 videos or so let's see and there's a traceable for every one of those mm -hmm. so at two dollars you're getting you know and that and we go back to february 2017 so there's probably another couple hundred more there it's a pretty good Easily. deal oh yeah yeah there's yeah. traceables for several <clears throat> hundred videos mm -hmm. yeah it's so, it's yeah. probably not going to stay that price forever. No, but, you know, it was a dollar there for a while. We've gone up to two, but, mm -hmm. you know, you think about the... As we the, add more... The quantity is yeah. just, when you put it in perspective, it's pretty pretty cool. You've done a lot of work. Thank you. And Thank you very much. And then also we're on thankfulart.com. You can sign up for newsletters and things yes. like that keep in touch yeah the newsletter is nice there we send it out once a week it's not spammy I promise we just send out what we're doing mm -hmm. let people know sometimes we add photos of our dogs garden in the garden <laughs> mm -hmm. just random stuff I'm sure we'll post some Halloween pictures this exactly. year right? we did last year mm -hmm. Halloween costumes mm -hmm. We already got our costumes. They're pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Costume is um, based off of what Liam, our grandson, would like yeah. this year. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure for him to come and visit. <laughs> oh, he's coming. He's yeah. already <laughs> promised. All right, good. He can't back out now. Yes. I would cry. <laughs> <laughs> You think I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I would for real cry. <laughs> so are we working that day? Halloween? No. On the, on the 
30th? Mm-mm. Yes. No. Nope. Two day weekend, baby. Yep. No, I figured we had people over, so I took that whole weekend off. Including Thursday, because I wasn't sure if they would be here or not, so. Which Thursday I'm going to get to go, as it turned out, my friend's birthday. So we're going to Conway. I'm going to do a girl's day. Yeah. I had taken it off because I had a doctor's appointment. And then I canceled that because I thought we were going to have family over that day. And then that doesn't look like it's likely. So instead, I'm going to do Friends Day. I'm going to take advantage of those when I can. <laughs> I don't get to do that as much as I used to when I was a stay-at-home mom. And Well, I'm still a stay-at-home mom, but I've got more of a job now. <laughs> Used to be, I wasn't tied to a schedule <laughs> in particular days. That is one of the only bad things about the live streams. I enjoy them. I think they're awesome. I love them. But they do tie us down to those days. Mm -hmm. I can't work at my own. I have to be there on certain days at certain times. So, but, of course, that's like everybody's job, right? Most people's job. Is yeah, that. for some reason they want me at work for certain <laughs> work. days at certain times. It's so unusual. So, well, I'm used to as an artist being able to be a little bit more flexible <laughs> <coughs> with my time. <laughs> but not so with YouTube. That's okay. It's much So to be clear, well worth it. you're doing Patreon this Thursday, mm -hmm. but not next Thursday, right, the not, 28th. Not the, right. Yes. Okay, so just make what? sure because oh, yeah. we have people who are asking. About, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I am working this week. Yeah, no, it's this is what uh, we were talking about Halloween. Right, so, so the 21st there will be the the video as normal. Yes. But none on the 28th. Right. And you expect to finish up the, the prickly seal this week? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hedgehog. Also, no. <laughs> <coughs> okay. <laughs> no comment. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Second coat of cadmium. Yellow light with the white. Off and just gonna push that paint around, just kind of dab it off that edge, just tapping my brush and pushing that wet paint into the other area there. Let's do that here too. Kind of just picked up a little bit of paint, just tapping that edge so because that glow is kind of going over the edge it's not a hard line there even though we're seeing the inside of the pumpkin it's just it's kind of subtle right getting a little bit of the cadmium red light and my orange I'm going to go right along that edge, get a little bit of water. Actually, let's get some glaze. That, that'll that help it go on a little bit more smoothly and slightly transparent, which is what we want. So right there, wipe my brush off and just tapping and pulling down a little bit. You can use your finger to blend it out too if you need to. Just be careful that your finger's clean. If you do that, I've, I've used a dirty finger before. It's not fun. 
and you end up dropping paint there that you didn't intend to drop. Right. I'm going to get a little bit of the darker color to outline and just kind of clean up that outline a little bit and blend that in if needed. Try to get it. Uh, you may not have to do this. I'm just going to clean it up because I'm seeing some darker, but make sure you blend that out so you don't have a halo around it if you do that. Okay, let's get some more of this darker color. I'm going to just glaze over. Pull that down. Clean that out. Get some more white and yellow. And while that paint's wet, I'm just going to pull up over it a little bit. Wipe most of it off. And then just use the edge of that brush to kind of blend the two together. Doesn't matter really which one you start with. You can start with the yellow and then put the darker on top or the darker and put the yellow but just blending pushing that paint around I need to give that center of that a little bit brighter almost white yellow so I'm going to get some white with my yellow and go just in the middle of that area there really brighten that up here. Bright, almost white. That's what's making it look like it's glowing. <clears throat> okay, and then we just need to give this one a second coat down here and we'll be done. Oh, we did good on this one. An hour, a little over an hour, maybe. I was amazing, that's for sure. I told you. Mark's like, can you get it done in two hours? I'm like, oh, it won't take that long. It's like, okay. <laughs> so is that all the wispies you're going to do? Are you going to do any? Uh, mm -hmm. I might do some more, I think. Since we have the time for it. Okay, let me get my other story out here real quick. <laughs> you promised me last year. Last When is Oak Island starting? Uh, next week, I think. Really? I think that's what I posted, right? Okay. Well... You, they promised big stuff last year and nothing came of it, so I'm losing faith in them as the years. Each season, I, I'm just, I don't know. You're still a believer. Mark's still a believer. He still thinks they're going to find something, but I'm less and less certain. Okay, putting the yellow over the top of that orange right there just to kind of soften up that edge. It's in two weeks, November 2nd. Okay. All right, well. They found something cool last year. What did they find last year? It may not be treasure, but they found something very interesting. What so, did they find? Well, I don't want to be a spoiler, but spoiler, they uh, they found that road. Okay. I, okay. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> like mom used to say. It's not treasure. You can't say anything nice. <laughs> Don't say anything at all. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Taking my <clears throat> mouth and turning the key and throwing it away. Oh, I can be one of the Oak Island guys for 
for Halloween. <laughs> that would be funny. I need to get a camo, camo baseball cap. You, you'll be like we were last year when we played the <laughs> characters from our favorite TV show, <laughs> Shall Not Be Names, mm-hmm. S-C-H-I-T-T-S. Some kind of Creek. a creek. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew who we were. Nobody. At the height of its popularity. <laughs> like, oh, I know. That's, that's a great thing about Halloween. You can be whatever you want to be. You can be so fancy. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, um, okay, well, you obviously never saw the show, and now I'm a little bit <laughs> not embarrassed, but <laughs> disappointed. Although my friend, my friend who is they a knew. big fan, she yeah. knew. So it was worth it. She loved it. <laughs> One person. <laughs> but we, we, our, our neighborhood, it gets, is, goes crazy for, on Halloween. It's a, it's a, mm-hmm. a safe area for trick-or-treaters. Well, safe-ish. <laughs> we say that, but we have had accidents. But, um, we, we just have tons of cars come in from, all over the city. So we just, instead of, instead of getting up every five minutes to go, not even that, to go to the door, we just sit outside now and <laughs> pass out candy by the bucket full, literally. But it's super fun. And we always dress up. So get into the spirit of it. And yeah, some people complain about people coming, but I'm like, I don't care. I used to do that when I was a kid, and we did that with our kids. We'd go to, you know, other neighborhoods where the houses were closer together. And so I trick or treated growing up in Palm Springs. We'd go to the rich people's houses <laughs> and get like full size candy bars. And <laughs> it was the. She threw shade. I did. Towards Liberace. I did. I did. She called him out. He would, to his he face. He had hard candy. <laughs> like, well, what are you doing? I did not. He asked. I, I was looking, and he was like, what, what are you looking for? And I was like, do you have any chocolate? <laughs> he said no. He was very sweet about it. And I was eight, so I didn't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> He's giving out hard, hard wrapped candies in in uh, crystal crystal bowls <laughs> on a long table with a long tablecloth. Him and was his he wearing furs and, and jewels? You know, I don't remember what he was wearing. I you know I don't remember he was behind a table he was behind the table with his bodyguards and um, two two guys probably one was not his bodyguard but <laughs> yeah he was very nice and it was really cool and nobody knows who he is anymore but he was very pop popular when we were younger so he was very well known entertainer kind of was around the same time as the Rat Pack I think he was played in Vegas around that same time as them if I'm not mistaken like 60s Okay, so just kind of softening up here. It's taken a couple, two, three coats here for this to cover. So I don't know if I should have painted around it. I'm kind of thinking maybe it would have been better, but of course we had been going over the black, so it really, like, the orange is not much better than the, worse than the black would have been. So it doesn't really matter what you're doing here. You're going to have to 
cover this a couple of times to get it to be bright enough. And going over the edge of that, you know, the inside part a little bit, adding the lighter or, you know, just slightly, slightly like one shade darker or so um, with that Indian yellow hue on the, just the inside there to add that glow. just still a little bit blotchy so a little bit of white pretty pretty much 50 50 it's pretty pretty white light right here there we go And then I want that really bright orangey red right in here. I'm going to get that cadmium red light. A little bit of glaze just to make it a little bit more transparent so it's not so harsh. And add it right there and along that edge. All right, I like it. Add a little bit right there. bring this out just slightly. Notice his nose is a little bit rounder right here. Just bring that out just slightly. What happened? Mm -hmm. Hmm? I just remember the battery from the other day. Oh. Sure. Didn't plug it back in. No, it's charged. I checked mm. it yesterday. What was wrong with it? No clue. I think it's going wacky around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got my lights on a on a the Alexa kind of. Whoop. Okay, she, she didn't hear me. Sorry, I'm not sure oh, about. She that. did hear me. <laughs> she did hear me. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry, so she's. You should see how freaked out she named is on a. It's combined with. Combined with. All the smart stuff. All my smart lights. We've got all of my lights in the studio because we have tons of lights in here. And they're all on switches that automatically turn on and off. And they weren't working today. So I was worried that we weren't going to have very much light today. But Mark got it working for me, but we need to get it figured out so I don't have that problem on Thursday because he's not going to be here to help me. Okay, sorry. I'm getting nitpicky here. I need to stop. Mm -hmm. I'm just adding more and more layers here. Really what I need on these because they're not wanting to lay down is I need to let it dry completely really, really well and then add my brighter layers again. So... Could you real quick uh, go over? Uh, you mixed the blue yeah, and the red light here. What? You mixed the blue and the black together to get the the colors that you just kind of dabbed in for the raven. Yes, blue, black, and just a tiny bit of quinacridone magenta. Okay. Getting some of that cadmium red light. Want it nice and bright right along that edge there. Right there. Coming down.
down. I'm just going to use my finger and push it down. And there's some up here too. And I want to clean that cadmium off my hand right away. I don't want it. Soak it in. It's not a good chemical you want on your hands. <laughs> and then I'm going to do a little bit of a glow around the outside of the teeth. So just this cadmium red light. And do it around the outside on the you know, pumpkin side, and then just kind of push it out, blend it out a little bit so that it looks like it's glowing around. You can see see these two that we did and these ones we haven't done. So it kind of just creates that like little glow effect where it makes it look like that light is peeking around. Plus it allows us to kind of clean up any of these edges that are a little messy. Honestly, I think that the pumpkin's the hardest, harder than the raven or anything. So <laughs> if you wanted to simplify, you might just do, the, well, I don't know, maybe the, the eye of the raven's probably a little tricky. You know, just having that. Hey, regarding the uh, canvas, do you know the difference between like the regular mixed media ones you use in the I prefer water, the, in I, the water yeah I mix them I I like the mixed media ones better myself I think that they're more based towards acrylic type applications than the watercolor ones even though the watercolor ones do say they work with acrylics and they do um, the surface is just uh, accepts paint a little bit differently I just I kind of prefer the mixed media ones myself so yeah, it doesn't really hurt or matter if they no it doesn't <laughs> but yeah but i do i do like the new these ones are older or the they, these boards have been around a little bit longer the new mix the mixed medium boards are new and i i think honestly a lot of it had to do with them having trouble getting the linen in so they weren't able to do some of the linen boards that they well, I don't know. You know, they probably had. I, I can't tell you why mixed, why they did it. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I, I don't know, <laughs> but I do know that they've been having trouble getting linen. So, as everybody's had trouble getting certain things from other countries where they, you know, because before these the mixed media canvases I was using the linen canvas boards all the time and so I've had to switch and I actually like them better so there you go and they're cheaper so win-win all right um okay I'm gonna do even more yellow on here I just I think I want it really obvious that there's a glow on here so I'm gonna just pump pop that out there even more right there little bit of orangey and that orange is you know a little too obvious so just getting a little glaze and paper towel dab it off there we go nice I like it Oops. All right, and then yes, let's go ahead and just add some little finishing touches. We'll add some like straw and stuff around the base. Might as well. I think I think it'll look good. So I'm gonna get this smaller brush. We'll see if I can get the right little bit of. The unbleached titanium. Ooh, got blue in it. Okay. Unbleached titanium in my burnt umber, burnt sienna color. And 
and I want a little bit of both and I'm just gonna you know how like hey kind of just give it a little zigzaggy lines here and really dark down here You can leave that off if you don't like it, it's up to you. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of yellow because the straw is, a lot of times it's got some yellow in it. Get some that golden yellow though. I'm not looking at photographs so obviously I'm just kind of making this up and maybe messing it up I don't know if I like that but yeah I don't know if I like that I you know I like it it, kind of, it grounds it kind of grounds you it I know it's hate okay <clears throat> I think the color is off a little bit. Got some glowy bits in it. Yeah. Getting the black here. Just making sure that the parts are that are kind of under the pumpkin are a little bit darker than the parts that mm -hmm. stick up. think I want a few little viney things that have a little little bit berries or something like that. I'm gonna get some dark blue, make a green with my yellow, the phthalo blue, yellow, add some burnt umber so it's not so And just use the tip of my brush to kind of create some little vines. And then let's use some berry color. Let's get some orange and magenta. We'll create some kind of reddish berries here. Yeah, I like that. Just kind of adds a little pop of color. Why not have it up there? Who knows? Maybe they just had some draped around. Let's add a little bit of extra detail. I like it. I like it better. Okay. And I've made this up myself, so you can do whatever you want on yours. Make it, Whoa. maybe bring it down over the pumpkin a little bit right here. I'm just gonna put a few little down here. I'm getting a little crazy with it, but <laughs> might as well. If you're gonna go for it, just go for it, you know? Don't. It's just paint. You can 
paint over it if we hate it. This went on too soupy, so I need to try that again. Or, see, I can erase it completely if I don't like it. So, but I did like it. I just want to get it a little bit not so wet. holding some of it. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. And the berries are literally just dots. Not even doing anything fancy with them. If you wanted to get super fancy, you could give them a little highlight, get a little bit of the white with some of the orange. Add a little bit of highlight to some of them. I think I'm going to call that good. All right, so this is an example of just kind of going with it. This is definitely much more of a whimsical style. It's not super realistic. But in some ways it is, but you know, the bird, I think. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think it was fun. If you guys liked this and kind of this style and kind of, you know, just like playing with it and seeing how to um, make things a little bit different, um, I'd be curious to know what you thought in the comments you know if you want to see more kind of out of the box stuff like this uh it's a little bit scary for me because i never know exactly how it's going to go but i do enjoy this kind of thing i'm gonna give a little bit more highlight right here so what if we think you're colorblind <laughs> yeah. sorry well <laughs> yeah that was more to do with them not seeing the colors that i'm seeing so yeah that's i get it i mean yeah but they're there. You just have to look for them. Look carefully. You'll see them. In this kind of painting, we've just kind of used our logic and things like the, you know, glow on this um, white pumpkin. You know, knowing the properties of white and knowing the proximity of this pumpkin here, putting that glow there kind of helped bring that out and... If we didn't have that, it wouldn't look as realistic. Of course, the berries and the straw and everything kind of took it out of the realism realm somewhat. But go ahead and do that. I'm going to get a little bit of white and just pop a little bit of white highlights on here. Super chat. Super chat. Yay. Yes. We have pretty incredible fans. We do. And tonight's super chat is from Patty, and she says, uh, "I'm always a little sad when these are over. Oh. So for that, thank you. Oh, thank you, Patty. That's so sweet. That's awesome. That's sweet. I love that. All right. Yeah, I really like the bird. I think we needed it. I don't, you know, I don't think it would be quite as as fun without the." little added details i think it i enjoyed it hope you guys did too it's just it was fun for me to kind of play with it and give it a little extra something and i'm gonna try to do more photoshop -y type of things like this in the future because i think it helps me to kind of be a little bit more creative and not just rely on what i find in photographs but you know kind of take them and make them my own a little bit more so all right, there we go. One more. <laughs> this just in. Nice. Uh, we got a super chat in from Michael. He oh. says, looking good. Thanks for all that you do. Oh, thank you, Michael. I'm glad you liked yes, it. Thank you, Michael. A little bit of just light white right there. There's just like a little highlight coming off. It helps everything. Okay, I think that's good. I'm just going to... I I get to this point... And I say I'm done, and then I, I see little things because what it, what I do is I take a step back, kind of you know mentally, and just sort of when I'm painting, I'm like right in 
you know, fo- so focused. And then, you know, when I when I think, okay, that's all I know to do, and I think I'm finished, then I can kind of take a step back, and then I start to see other things that I maybe missed or, you know, just didn't um, notice at first. So um, that's normal. And I would say, you know, when you're when you're finishing your paintings, just you know, take a minute, um, step out of the room, get you know, get a drink or something, and come back to it, and look at it with fresh eyes. And a lot of times, you'll see things that you kind of missed the first time. So. All right. Oh, sign it. Yes. Got to sign it. All right. Go ahead and use my pen for that or my brush for that. Thank you. So, you got... That was pretty awesome, babe. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And I mm-hmm. hope you guys did too. So, at the time of this recording, this Thursday, two days, you'll be finishing up your hedgehog painting. Yes. And then we'll be back on Saturday. With another show of some kind. We're painting a landscape, a blue red tree. Oh, yes. Looking forward to it. And then um, next week we'll be painting a black cat on another black canvas Ooh. painting. So, um, I'm, very nice. Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit of black here and just kind of touch up where I see them. So, if you haven't Hello. already, hit the like button for tonight's video, subscribe. Yes. Check out the hundreds and hundreds of other videos of all different le- levels from intro, beginner series, to kids, to a little bit more advanced stuff. And and mm-hmm. then also check out Patreon for traceables and bonus contents and a little bit more advanced in-depth paintings. Too. Right. Yes. Links to the brush guys down below if you yes. need brushes. Yes. Uh, Angela Fine Art, 5% off, right? Yes. Okay. Angela Fine Art. Yep. All right, that's it. Hope you guys try this. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.